This is the M80 motorway, connecting Glasgow and Stirling. And this is the quarter of a million pound statue called Aria. Standing at 33 feet, this stunning statue of a mermaid was created by the Glasgow-based sculptor Andy Scott, who also designed the Kelpie sculpture, amongst others. But what is the story of this statue, and how does it connect to one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen, the Roman Empire? To find out, we need to travel about 8 miles northeast. The Aria statue is named after Aria Fadila the mother of the Roman Emperor Antonius Pius, who ruled the Roman Empire from 138 to 161 AD. In 142 AD, Antonius Pius would order Roman troops to construct a wall that would stretch right across the land we call Scotland today, from Old Kilpatrick um, on the River Clyde to Bowness on the Firth of Forth. A wall we now know is Antonine Wall. This wall was the true northwestern frontier of the Roman Empire, around 100 miles north of Hadrian's Wall, a wall the Romans constructed in the north of modern England. Today I've taken you to Rough Castle in the Falkirk area. This was an important site for the Romans along Antonine's Wall. The wall itself took 12 years to construct and ran 39 miles across the country, and it stood at 3 metres high uh, and 5 metres wide. The wall itself was built on stone foundations, but it was constructed mainly by turf, hence why there's not much of the wall left today. A ditch was dug, a massive ditch, um, just north of the wall, by the Romans, as an extra barrier of defence, and this is still present today, as you can see. These strange holes in the ground at Rough Castle are actually the remains of a Roman defensive booby trap that was just north of the wall. The Romans hid sharp wooden spikes, smeared in animal fat to encourage sepsis in the victims, in the holes, and covered the holes with ferns to conceal them. These traps are called lilia, meaning lilies, a name coined by Caesar's army years earlier given how they looked. These traps were obviously meant to give the Romans an extra layer of defence against the people of ancient Scotland, and Antonine's wall was attacked on various occasions throughout its history. But who were these people of ancient Scotland? First up is the Caledonians, a tribal confederation uh, that were considered to have occupied the region more north um, of, this, of this territory in general. The Caledonians were known as a fierce tribe of ancient Scotland, or tribal confederation, and they fought the Romans on countless occasions. Second up is a tribal confederation of Scotland that you perhaps haven't heard of unless you've watched a previous video of mine, the Mai Tai, a tribal confederation of ancient Scotland that occupied an area extremely close to the wall. The Mai Hill in the Ockles in the Stirling area which is just east of where I'm standing the now, it was the stronghold of the Mai Tai, and they probably came into conflict with the Romans on countless occasions. The Romans used diplomacy as well as military tactics on numerous occasions as well though, and there was potentially agreements um, at various points in the short time the Romans occupied this area. I know for instance that Roman coins um, have certainly been found all over Scotland, and they were given to, to the native peoples at various points. For a more detailed breakdown of the Mai Tai, this ancient tribal confederation um, of the land we call Scotland today, um, I'll link a video above um, as I made an exclusive video on the Mai Tai. I'll also put the link in the description below. Another ancient tribe in this area was known as the Damnoni. As far as some of the attacks on the wall um, and some of the general conflicts in this general area, one of the things that was reading um, as I was walking around this place Place, um, states that according to legend, a Pictish army led by Graham or Grimm breached the wall about 500 metres west of here. Very quickly, if you enjoy my videos and you would like to support my work in general through Patreon and get exclusive benefits for only a couple of pounds per month, all the links will be in the description below. Thank you and now on with the video. Antonine Wall was protected by 16 forts with small fortlets between them and trip movement was facilitated by a road linking all the sites known as the military way. Decorative slabs were created by the Romans to commemorate building the wall. The bridge nest distance slab is one. Found in the 19th century in Bowness, and this beautiful slab marked the building of the eastern section of the wall. Antonine's wall was obviously a way for the Romans to fortify their position in Scotland, the land we call Scotland today. 
And it was a way to keep the barbarians, as they saw them, north. The wall also served as a way for the Roman Emperor at the time, Antonius Pius, to flex his muscles. After all, his predecessor, Hadrian, had a wall in the, in the north of England, what we call England today. So why shouldn't he have a wall named after him? The area around the wall became a strict military zone, with around 9,000 Roman troops stationed along the wall. The Roman presence on Antonine Wall was quite short-lived, however. When the Emperor Antonius died in the 160s AD, the Romans retreated back to Hadrian's Wall. A combination of various factors, the death of the Emperor of course, the headache of managing such a long supply chain to the Northern Wall, as well as repeated attacks from the natives, meant that manning and maintaining Antonine Wall just wasn't worth it for the Romans, and they retreated south to Hadrian's Wall. To find out more about the history of this region and the tribal confederation known as the Mai Tai, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. For ways to support this work, um, I'll be in the description below. Um, Patreon's a, a great way to support this channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.